Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Archihacks. And today is Tutorial Tuesday. So as you can see on the screen, we'll be creating this conceptual axonometric room straight from Rhino and V-Ray. We'll start all the way from modeling this room, adding some textures and rendering, and then doing some post-production on Photoshop. So if you're interested in a particular part of this tutorial, you can jump to the timestamp in the description. And as you can imagine, these illustrations look amazing everywhere you put it, whether that be on portfolio, your website, Instagram, you name it. And if you happen to post it on your social media, make sure to tag us for a chance to be featured on our account. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so here we have a fresh Rhino file and let's get started by changing our unit and make our unit two meters. Let's first off create a box. I'm gonna start from the origin, so I'll type in zero. And then I'll also type in 2.5 for width, 2.5 for length, and 2.5 for height. Okay, now we have a perfect cube in the middle of our scene. I'm gonna control shift and click on these faces to delete these faces. And now we're left with this nice isometric room. Um, from here, we're going to start populating the room with some furnitures and plants. And as you may already know, we have a pre-made pack for that. So let's see. We actually have a bedroom scene. So I'm going to pick a bed from here. And I think the setup looks pretty good. So I'll take that setup as well. And let's grab a cabinet from here. And I think that's all about all we want. But of course, if you want to furnish other rooms, there are other options available in this file. So if you're interested, you can check out the download file from the description below. Now with our files, I'm going to just copy and paste them into our scene. Let me just move them back to where we want to be. Okay, and now I'll start placing them. So maybe this desk can go right into the corner like so. And then the bed right here and the cabinet will sit right next to the bed just like so all right i'm just keeping things a little bit loose <clears throat> to kind of like maintain the conceptual look and let's see let's create some shelves shall we and this one i'll make it stand out stick out just a little bit as well let me bring that up and let's space it out a lot yeah that looks pretty good looks kind of tall so i'm gonna bring it down a little bit and here's our basic scene and now the room looks a little bit boring so i'm going to go ahead and add some plants from our plant pack so for the plants pack there are assorted mesh models that you can deploy into your scene so let's see what kind of plants we want in our scene so i'm just going to grab these house plants right over from here and i'll also grab this cactus and this large plant and yeah, this pack also comes with a lot of tall grass, pumpkin, and vine options as well. So if you're interested, you can also download from the description below. Okay, so that's all the materials we need. Um, I'm going to copy and paste them into our scene. And let's place them. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm just going to rearrange our layers just a little bit. And then I will go ahead and place these furnitures. So what's a little bit tricky about these plants is that these are mesh files, which means that Rhino's auto snap don't work. So what we need to do is turn on the vertex selection from the O snap. So once you have it selected, now I can start snapping into these corners on the mesh. All right, so let's place this one right on top of our little shelf. Okay, a little cabinet, I guess. and. Another thing what we might want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and remove this little hanging part of our pot. So it looks like that. And I'll take this one and put it on the shelf. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's bring it in just a little bit. Okay. All right, and I'll take these guys and bring them on our desk. Like so. 
Mm, actually, I think I might switch them around a little bit. So I'll take this guy and put it over here. And take this little plant and put it on the desk. It's a minor thing, but yeah, I think that looks better. And this cactus is, uh, I think it's a quite, it's a little too big, so I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. If you hold down shift, you're able to scale in all three directions. So as you may already know, you can always use a little box to scale in one dimension. And if you hold down shift, it'll scale everything in the same dimension. Okay, and what's really cool about the plants pack is that you can actually customize the pots. So as you can see, these are separate selections, separate geometries. So for example, I'm going to take this geometrical gem shaped pot and put it beneath our cactus. So we can add some variation of where our plants live. Okay, I guess there's no hmm, soil, but I don't think we'll see that. So I think I'll leave it the way it is. And last but not least, I'm going to take this hanging plant and put it way over there. And uh, as you may have noticed, these, fern uh, these plants are actually quite low poly. So, and that is quite intentional so that we can keep the files really light and easy to model with. And of course, they're still detailed enough so that you can recognize what they are. And they still look good in certain distance. So up to this distance in the interior scene, it's still no problem. And it looks even better when you're zoomed out further. So as long as you're not like looking at it like right up close like this, you probably won't notice that uh, these are low poly models. Okay, so our scene looks like this now and it's looking quite good. Um, actually, one more thing. I'm just going to quickly swap these plants around a little bit. Let's put these guys in the corner. And move our monitor and computer right over to the side. And I think I might turn this chair just a little bit to give it a more organic, natural look. Okay, looks like a more inhabited room. Alright, and to put a cherry on top, I think I'm going to add some textures to it. It'll be really quick. I'm just going to add some really basic ones. So for example, let's see where to start. Okay, so there are some wooden elements and I kind of want them to be light brown. So I'll select them. Or better yet, I'll select one of them. And choose material tab. And go to use a new material. Custom. And now we'll choose a very light beige color. Um, I think we can yeah, immediately see what that looks like. So you can really play around with your choices. Um, tan's a good place to start, but I think I might want to make it a little bit yellower. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, if that is good, I'm going to close the block editor. Since these models are blocked, you're automatically isolated from the entire scene. And you can just go ahead and play around with your block until you're done and go back to your normal scene. So for this little cabinet, I think we can use the existing material. So let's call this wood. Okay. Now I'm going to preview it. That looks pretty good. And since these two are not blocked, I can just go ahead and apply the material. For blocked objects, applying a material right away doesn't actually change the material, as you can see. Um, you actually have to get inside the block definition in order to edit them. So for example, this chair, as you might have seen, nothing changed when I applied the material outside. But once I double click into the model, I'm able to assign a new material. So let's call this one, um, I don't know, let's make it like gray. Let's call this fabric. All right. And maybe I'll go ahead and apply the same material to this bed sheet. Okay, looks good. And what else can we do? Um, maybe I'll make the floor a little bit more colorful. Use a new material, custom. And let's do something kind of, I don't know, interesting.
yeah, it's nothing too special, but you can spend as much time or little time as you want. But uh, this will be like a nice conceptual look that you can easily go for. You can use this kind of representation for explaining your concept or showing the look and feel for your client. Okay, maybe just to go one more step further, I'm gonna go ahead and render this in an axonometric format. Let's make the perspective parallel, raise our camera just a little bit. Okay, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and see how this looks like with default setting. I haven't changed anything from the default. And that's how it looks. It already looks pretty good, honestly. Um, I think we could make our monitor a little bit darker. And I think the rest of it is quite good, actually. Let me just uh, stop the real-time rendering. And I'll take these guys and explode them for the time being. Group by Control G. And let's apply a new material. We will call this computer and make it a dark gray. Okay, cool. There we go. Yeah, once that is ready, I think we're pretty ready to set up our render. I'm gonna open up our V-Ray menu. Let's go over to the settings, make our output 1920 by 1080, remove interactivity and progressive rendering. We'll leave the quality at medium, let's denoise it. And we're almost done actually, I think that's about it. All right, rendering has begun. I'll see you guys on the other side when it's done. And it's done. That's how it looks now. It looks quite good already. I'm just gonna go ahead, bring this over to Photoshop and clean things up just a little bit, add some cherry on top. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. Uh, I'm just gonna center this piece just in the middle and crop our scene into a one by one square. And once that's ready, I'm gonna go ahead and create a background layer. If you can control click on a new layer button, it'll create a layer in the background. And then I'll just fill it white, like so. And then I'll create one more layer to create an outline for the hexagon part and not the plants. So for that, I'm gonna have to click on a lasso tool and kind of trace the hexagon. So now I'm gonna fill this in with black and scale this up a little bit. So control T to bring up this uh, free transform. And once that's ready, um, I'm gonna start filling in with some color. So the reason why I added this is so that I can add some um, three dimensionality or the thickness to the wall. So I probably should have done this earlier, but here we are. So, so if you could do this in Rhino, I think that would have been even more realistic and easy, but here's a way to kind of make up for the difference, kind of like cover for your mistakes, I guess. So first I'm gonna add some lightness to the top, but maybe before I do that, I'm gonna select the lasso tool again and just make sure that I'm only selecting the top. So if you hold down um, Shift and Alt at the same time when you start clicking, lasso tool will allow you to select the intersection of your previous selection and your new selection. And with 20% or 30% opacity brush, I'm just gonna start painting in gently. And that looks like enough light coming from the top. So now I'm gonna add some extra lightness to this part. Actually, I'll add some darkness to the left side of our illustration. So I'll do that. And for that, I'm gonna take a black color with 30% opacity and start painting in. Oh, as you can see, I've selected, I didn't select the intersection this time, so I'm painting in this whole area. So if I want to select the intersection, I could simply go over to the thumbnail, hold down Control, Alt, and Shift. So basically all your control keys, and then it'll select the intersection of your existing selection, as well as your layer. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. All right, that looks quite 3D. Um, one thing that I think is kind of missing though, is that so now I'm just gonna touch up the image just a little bit to make it more lively and dynamic. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a curves adjustment 
And holding down Alt, if you click between two layers, it allows you to clip onto that layer. So that means this curves adjustment will only affect our axonometric and not the walls behind. So I'm going to create this nice gentle S curve to increase contrast. And I'll also add a hue and saturation to add some more liveliness. Okay, that looks nice and saturated. So I want to avoid adding this contrast or this saturation to the pots because they're already so brightly red. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a brush and start brushing in some black into the mask of our hue and saturation. So that means we're slowly taking out the effects of the hue and saturation. Okay, that looks good. And finally, I'm just going to go ahead and take a dodge tool and start brushing in the plants because some plants look really dark other while others are not so dark. So I'll just uh, go ahead and do that. Um, I'm doing this really quickly, but you can of course spend as much or little time as you want on your own rendering. Okay. All right. All right. I'm gonna. I'm good with that. Um, so one more thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a screen to this monitor. And for that, I'm gonna take a quick screenshot from our Instagram page. If you're interested in feature getting featured on our account, you can always tag us for a chance. Okay. And for this, I'm actually gonna. Um, Go all the way to the top of our layer setup and then control V to paste it and control T to free transform our monitor image. So let me just bring it right to the bottom left corner, then place it around here. Now what I can do is squeeze it so that it fits the height and width and holding down control, I'm able to skew our image. If you want to learn more about Photoshop tricks like this, make sure to check out our previous video on Photoshop tips and tricks. Okay, once that is ready, I'm going to go ahead and double click on our layer so that we can bring up a layer style. And here we're going to add some outer glow to give it a bit of a glow to our monitor. Now I'm going to go ahead and increase the size just a little bit. And reduce the opacity so the effect's not too strong. Okay, that looks pretty good. And there we have it. We have our low poly extometric diagram with extremely nice and soft shadows that you can use for presentation and explaining your material look and feel for your clients and boss. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this one, subscribing would be a good way to do it. So with that being said, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.